United Colors Rockers Avenue Radio. Hope you're all enjoying our show. It's now time to move into our interview segment. We have another very special guest, an extremely talented DJ music producer from India who goes by the name of Sartek. He is a very impressive individual. He's played at some of the biggest festivals and shows across India, like Sunburn. He's released some awesome tech house and bass house remixes. He's worked with A.R. Oman, Justin Bieber, A.P. Dillon. He's worked with big labels such as Amada, Revealed, Spinning, Sony. He does many things in the industry, and he's definitely someone to watch. His content is great, and we're very happy to have him on our show, United Colors. Please welcome, for the first time on Rockus Avenue Radio, Sartek. How are you doing, my friend? You good? Uh, I'm doing excellent. Uh, my pleasure to be on the show, and thank you so much, Vic, for calling me. Uh, I love to do such interviews. Uh, I'll be very honest with you, and especially when a person like you there is in front of me. Nice. With her, such a positive vibe, I'm I'm so excited for this interview. Fantastic, yeah. I mean, there's so much talent now coming from India in terms of DJs, music producers, not just from the EDM scene, but now we're seeing so many different genres just blow up with bass and tech house and everything else. And before we get into it, I wanted to ask, firstly, where in India are you from and where did you grow up? So I'm, I'm based out of New Delhi, uh, been here for the last uh, 34 years of my life. But as they say, Mumbai is, is the hub of entertainment in India. I keep switching between Delhi and Bombay. So Bombay is my workplace. Delhi is my home. So trying to maintain a nice balance between both the cities. So my mom is happy and the people in the office are also happy. So nice. it's it's exciting. Uh, uh, just a two-hour flight and you're there. Awesome. Tell our listeners a bit about the differences in the electronic music scene in Delhi versus Mumbai. So I was speaking to Avantika, who we briefly mentioned before we started our interview. She performed in London. And she was mentioning to me that in Delhi, it's really interesting now with the electronic music scene. There is a bit of an Afro-tribal melodic scene as well as Tech House, whereas Mumbai is a bit more alternative and edgy. What's your view? How do you feel the markets are differing in terms of electronic music? I personally feel, uh, uh, considering Delhi is in the northern part of the country, Mm -hmm. uh, and when you talk about North India, nothing, nothing, and nothing, and nothing can take replace Punjabi here. Okay. Uh, in 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 Delhi and the parts near Delhi, I think electronic is still still far behind. Uh, a lot of reasons behind that. Uh, there's there's a very less population speaking English. When you go southern sites like Bangalore, Mumbai, Hyderabad, people talk in English a lot. Uh, there are not different genres who are famous there because. Because, you know, Punjabi is taking over it's like anything. So their second food, the second material they get is electronic. But when you come on the northern part of India, the only food they like is Punjabi. Right. So it's it's slowly picking up. But this exact thing is because because Punjabi is, is not everybody listening to Punjabi. There's a little cult following in Delhi. But that's that's quite less as compared to South India. No, I see. I mean, I guess India is firstly such a huge country with so many different cultures and subcultures and languages. And what works in one part of the country might not necessarily completely hit with the audience in another part. So that makes sense in terms of the North because of Punjab and everything else. And there's a big Punjabi scene there. Yeah. And whereas you said, you know, the South people are, you know, very, speak English, somewhat very well educated. So perhaps they're open to these different styles of international electronic music. So if you were to go to a typical nightclub in Delhi, what sort yeah. of music would you be hearing? Uh, I would I would just say a Spotify top hundred. Uh, okay. lot of lot of pop is gonna be there. Uh, there are clubs which do the underground, the techno, the second leg nights, but they're very limited. Limited. Okay. Ninety percent of the clubs are are playing your Calvin Harris, your David Guetta's, your your pop, the cheese, as we say. Yeah. Uh, and that's for a very simple reason. It's a bar, and they want sales, right? Yeah. So the only way you can get sales is a champagne popping is only on David Guetta songs. Yeah, and that's what Delhi is. But again, other part Delhi is just it's a, it's just the capital of India. That's true, but just one part of India. Other places you go, oh man, the scene is just just completely different. Uh, I'm I'm kind of blessed that I'm I'm from India because every time I travel to a different part of this country, it's like a new country altogether. Uh, there is Sikkim where the scene is completely different. There's Kerala, which is again, uh, booming with underground music. Then you go to Bombay where there's the influence of Bollywood and underground so it's just mesmerizing how this country is divided in terms of the music the food the language and everything yeah for sure i was on a webinar a few weeks ago with some producers from india and 
they were talking about how musicians from outside of the country are trying to break in into India. And it's one of those countries where you need to spend some time and just understand the differences between each region. And, you know, what, like I said before, what works in Delhi might not always work in the South or in Mumbai or Gujarat or, or, or wherever it might be. But you've actually performed all over the country. Where would you say has been your favorite city or region to play? Yeah. My, my, my favorite place to play in India has to be Goa. Uh, I think for the past uh, 10, 12 years, there's not been a single show where I'm back in the hotel and I'm saying, oh man, that was that I didn't, I didn't enjoy. Goa has been just, just top notch all the time. And the second favorite has to be Pune. Uh, Pune is very close to Mumbai. And it's the students' hub. So it's, it's a place where there are all universities. And the, every show, the energy and the amount of people come for the shows is just insane. Wow. Have you played in indoor before? Uh, indoor, yeah, yeah, indoor. Indoor is, uh, is again, very exciting. Uh, it's just recently come up in the scene for the past four or five years. A yeah. uh, lot of promoters are promoting electronic music there. A uh, lot of nightclubs are there. Uh, I would again say, you know, uh, if, if you talk about indoor, that comes in the tier two cities. Uh, tier two cities, indoor, Nagpur, Meerut, Kanpur. Oh man, the fan following, the energy, the vibe is just insane. If you yeah. ask me tomorrow after go to Mumbai or Indore, I'll pick it. <laughs> You'd pick Indore, would you? Because because the people, yeah, I would pick Indore because you know the the, the simple reason Indore the people know there that Amin Van Buren or Tiesto might not come ever. So for them, Sartik is is their Amin. Sartik is their Tiesto. So with the kind of love, the kind of support they show, uh, especially in tier two cities, I just I just love it. That's really interesting, actually. So I was speaking to Evan Teague about this as well, and she was mentioning about tier two cities, and I was like, "What's a tier two city? I have no idea what that is." But she was breaking it down for me. So I think you've explained it as well. And those cities, because they're smaller, and in some places in India, which are maybe a little bit more tricky for uh, international artists to travel to, they don't always see the big acts like the DJ Snakes and the Tiestos. So it's a really a, a great opportunity for. Um, more independent and more kind of local international uh, local Indian DJs and producers to showcase their talent, you know, like yourselves and and many others. So yeah, it's it's really interesting actually that you say tier two cities are um really on the yeah. rise and, and on the up. And also I've heard that in these tier two cities, they're quite open minded as well. So they're they're not extremely picky about specific types of music. They're really open to hear what you can do and they give you a bit of a chance. Would you agree or disagree? Uh I, I kind of agree with you. Uh, what what I like about tier two cities, the smaller cities, as we say, is uh, because they're smaller. Uh, if if one promoter or one event company has booked one one artist, the second promoter who is in competition will not will not try to do something different from you. He'll he'll support you. So they all come together and do one show, one month, one big show. But if you go to bigger cities, you go to Delhi, you go to Mumbai. Okay, this promoter is doing this artist. The second will try to compete with him. Right. Because there okay. is a population huge. But when you go for smaller cities, they all come together and do one big show. Right. Okay. So they support each other a bit more. Okay. That's nice to hear. And yeah, yeah. so just uh, going back to your performances very quickly. So in addition to these tier two cities, you've also performed at huge stages. You played at Sunburn, right? A few times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm resident, one of the resident DJs with Sunburn Festival. So right. yeah, it's been lovely eight years with them. Interesting, yeah. So you probably know DJ Sean, Shalinda Singh, yeah. and uh, yeah. So yes. I've I've met them a few times uh, when they were in London. We were hanging out. So yeah, great yeah. guys, uh, great family. And yeah. I wanted to ask you. So you've obviously got a great connection with Sunburn. How yeah. does a rising DJ and producer like you get to perform uh, in Sunburn? Is it down to your connections and who you know? Is it down to your remixes, your music, or is it down to your social media following? What would you say? Uh, I think it's, if, if I were really honest, it's the combination of everything. Uh, okay. You can't be the best musician without any social media. You can't be the best musician. You are the best social media, but have no connects with them. It has to be 30% of each. Uh, I would say right now what's working is, I would say what right now is this 80% of what is working is your social media. Yeah. Your one reel, your one song gets viral. You have 100k, 200k reels or that one song. Damn, someone got as we'll call you, hey man, are you free? Let's do a show. Uh, that's coming down right now, and I think I think that's good because internet is with everybody. Uh, interestingly, I I run an academy called the Sunburn Music Academy. Okay. Uh, I am I am the professor there. I we teach about hundred students a month, and uh, we teach uh, podcasts. We teach Ableton. We teach basic DJing, 
and after end of every uh, batch we do an assignment and we pick the top five students and we give them a chance to perform at sanban uh, you'll be surprised to know uh, when it comes to checking assignments and selecting a winner oh man it's a tough task because everybody is so spot on with the mixes with yeah. their mashups uh, with the kind of remixes they are making it just becomes very hard to pick one so the talent is booming is booming is booming 1.3 billion population i am just very excited what's going to happen in the next 5 10 years i know it's inevitable i mean with that many people in the country you're going to have some superstars coming out of that you know no doubt yeah. yeah so that's super cool that you're doing this and you're actually teaching in this academy and when you're performing on these huge stages like so let's take in let's take sunburn for example um is yeah. there a particular genre of electronic music which is really working well at the moment in india across all regions like tech house bass house is there something in particular or is it is edm still dominating uh, see uh, if you if you talk about festivals uh, where we are expecting people close to 5000 10000 uh, there and i'll be very honest uh, no matter what happens right now we see a phase of tech tech house picking up there was techno and then there was minimal and there was house music but let's be honest festivals worldwide whether it's a tomorrow land or it's an the headliner has to be a guy with a with a banging sound right it has to be a a, a, a afrojack a martin garrix and alesso because that's what people come for right but but then again you still have a smaller stage where you are doing underground music where there are 3 4 thousand people listening to house music uh, right now the, the times are very exciting i personally feel there is all genres are one right now in the sense that there is nothing big there's nothing small uh, the whole industry in terms of the labels is confused so they have no idea no matter how smart they act they have no idea what's happening with the sound these days yeah. so everybody is just trying their own luck and seeing where the new sound involves for sure and would you what would you describe your sound as because your remixes which are really good by the way they're the kind of like tech house bass house is that how you would describe it so so when i started my career uh, i was a complete big room hardwell boy i released a lot of music with with this label I did a lot of stuff for Amara, as you said. Uh, I did a lot of stuff with Kashmir. So I was a proper EDM festival sound big room guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but since COVID came in, uh, there were no festivals happening. I realized it's time to switch. So I'm doing a very uh, something very interesting called the folk house, where I'm taking folk music from India, uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, music from Tamil, okay. and combining it with nice electronic drill kind of vibe. some are, some are tech house some are housey so i'm giving i'm giving elders the nostalgia i'm giving youngsters the beats so trying to you know grow grow all kinds of people come to my show and and make it a little mainstream it's going to take time because i just started with this folk house a year ago uh we have six seven releases coming in the next year so i'm just trying to build this genre in india amazing yeah that's a really good idea actually i've heard some of your stuff and it's uh quite quite progressive as well and one of the things which i like about your remixes as well is that it's not just a tech house beat with the original vocal on top you try to get a bit creative you chop up the sample like with your gumsum gumsum tech house remix yeah, yeah, the one of yeah, kenai yeah. kia you know it's just gumsum gumsum like everyone knows what it is um but you know you didn't go full in with the with the vocal because everyone's heard so many remixes of that, of that. but yours was definitely a a stand out remix uh, a stand out version so of that song which uh, which I quite enjoyed so there is a certain formula there that I think you've got which is working and um definitely excited to hear more from um from your production side as well um so i, I kind of wanted to ask you one of the final things i wanted to move into is the state of sort of bollywood remixes and remakes so obviously you're electronic dj and producer and quite often we have these dj's and producers who are remixing it remixing and creating new versions of well known bollywood songs for example arijit singh might release a, a very famous bollywood song and then there'll be like a million remixes of kesaria or something like that um you know what what do you feel the current state of um sort of bollywood edm is do you think um it's lacking a bit of creativity or do you think you know everyone is just kind of following certain trends because in my opinion it's quite rare to find like a really stand out remix of a of a bollywood song you know which is which is doing well you know what's your what's your general view that's a very interesting question uh, uh my take on uh, my my take on this is is little technical little different from what you might have heard before uh i feel labels worldwide uh the sources of income have now 
completely and completely reliable on Spotify, the streaming numbers on different streaming platforms. Mm. Now, when you talk about streaming numbers and for labels to make money, it is to get the plays, right? As simple as that. Now, how do you get a play? Uh, chances of making an original and getting a play is tougher. Chances of picking up an old song, reworking it and getting somebody who's heard this song before and the nostalgia kicks in and then he goes and listens to your song. Yeah. So, so now because the source of income is through streaming, the risk taking capacity has reduced of trying originals. And end of the day, it's it's about making money and going back home. So the labels and the artists are thinking, okay, it's about the streaming numbers. It's about how many million views you've got. So let's do one thing. Let's just not waste our time creating something. Let's pick up something old, get a license, get copyrighted and try and make something of that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. You've explained it well. And that's exactly what's happening, I think, in the Bollywood scene at the moment. You know, lots of remakes, lots of reworks because it's a numbers game, you know. So even if the song is not amazing. They still know that they're going to get the views on YouTube. They're going to get the streams. So it's a really sort of a numbers game. So I've been speaking to a few people, for example, about the new version of uh, Pasuri, uh, which came out. And there's a, a kind of a controversy on that yeah. because the original, which is a really good song, in my opinion, was released a year ago. And now Bollywood have come out with a remake, which is, uh, in my opinion, it's OK. But uh, people are saying, you know, another remake. Did it really need a remake? And I think it's um, it's lost some of the art form and it's more about just getting numbers and views and, and making money, you know, because it's such a big country, you know, and that's what all these big record labels in India want to try to do, you know, and I think, you know, you explained it quite well there. You know, you know the smart thing is I want people to say the music is bad because if one say the music is bad, end of the day they're going in streaming and checking out the music is bad and I'm, I'm making money. Uh, end of the day I'm, I'm getting uh, favors. So, so all these controversies happen all the time and they're all, they're all, they're all very exciting. They're all very Nicely and strategically planned. Uh, this should happen. Uh, you know, as they say, any uh, negative promotion is the best promotion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There's no such thing yeah, as bad yeah. publicity. Yeah. So <laughs> with some of these remakes, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the engineers or songwriters are thinking to themselves, wow, this is like not great, but it's it's not great. But a lot of people yeah. are, no, it's not going to be not great. So they're going to go back and they're going to stream it and it's going to get views and numbers and still make money. <laughs> you know? And then they'll just move exactly. on to the next one and the next yeah. one, um, which is, um, you know, I think in the long run, it's it's a bit sad to see in terms of the art form of music. But, you know, there's the business side of it as well. Um, so, yeah, it's um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but on the other side, you know, you've got really interesting DJs and producers who are doing great things on big stages like yourself. So, you know, it's definitely great to speak with you and to have you on our show as well to give your insights. So before we let you go, we are going to do one final thing on United Colors, and that is our quick fire round. So this is basically the final segment of our interview. Oh, wow. and we ask you a bunch of questions in quick succession. And you have to say the first thing that comes into uh, your do head. I, do, I, do, I a, do I get a gift hamper after this? Like Sorry? a gift hamper? Do I get a gift hamper after this? <laughs> Depends how do well I get you a gift the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Depends <laughs> how well you answer the questions. All right. So let's do this very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Sartek let's or go. United Colors. Are you ready for our quick fire round? Okay. I am excited. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. Question number one. CDJs or turntables? CDJs. Chicken or lamb curry? Any day. Chicken curry. Who's your top Bollywood crush? Uh, Disha Patnani. Brilliant. Bangra or Garba? Ah, any day. Bangra, Bangra. Bangra, Bangra, yeah. Tiesto or David Guetta? Ah, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I would I would go with Tiesto. Cool. If you were to throw your own party, who would be the headliner? Uh, uh, interesting, 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 interesting. Uh, 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 um, probably I would say Don Diablo. Don Diablo. Oh, amazing. And and who would you want to collaborate with the most? Who's your number one pick to collaborate with? Uh, in in internationally, you're saying, or in the in Indian scene? Internationally, yeah. My dream would be Martin Garrix because I just love his creativity. Uh, there was this guy who I was was my number one. Uh, who's who sadly passed away, Avicii. 
So if somebody like Avicii comes back, uh, he was my dream collaboration since I started in music. I was outside of India, which would be your dream country to perform in? A dream country to perform in? Uh, 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 I've done I've done parts of Europe. Uh, okay, I've answered in one word. Dream country to perform in Japan. Japan. Okay, nice. Okay, Sartek, thank you for doing our quick fire round. So before we let you go, please do tell our listeners about any new projects, any re- any new releases, and also where they can find and follow you on social media and your website. Go for it. Hey guys, uh, my name is Sartek. I'm a music producer, DJ based out of New Delhi. Uh, I'm one of the innovators of this new sound called Folk House. Uh, I'm very excited to start this. Uh, I have lots of collaborations coming up. Uh, what I'm doing, as I said with uh, in this interview with Vic, that I'm taking old Bollywood samples, uh, making them reworked into electronic, uh, uh, into, into proper electronic vibe, uh, but uh, I'm not doing what Bollywood rework is doing. I'm just picking up the samples, trying to make something creative out of it. Uh, you can listen to my music on Spotify, uh, on different, different, on Apple Music. I go by the name Sartek, S-A-R-T-E-K. I'm there on Instagram at Sartek. And definitely, if you're listening to the show and you want to come to my show, just drop me a DM, uh, give Vix reference, and I'll put you on my guest list. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm planning a trip to India later this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And uh, if you're performing around the same time, you know, I'd love to come and check you out and see you do your for thing. Sure, for sure, for sure. And um, the final... Oh, I really appreciate that. And the final thing we wanted to ask was, I'm not sure if you had a chance to think about it, but your current favorite song. My current favorite song is by this guy called Raghav. Uh, the song is called Desperado. With Tesha. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, with Tesha. Oh man, it's just, the, the club goes mad. When I play that, it's just, they start screaming when they hear the first beat of the song. Really? Okay. It's just lovely. Uh, yeah, that's my current. Okay, definitely. We'll yeah, play it's, that it's, next doing, it's doing quite well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's doing quite well. And again, uh, if you listen to the song, it, it, this that, that song is gonna sum up what we what we discussed right now in this interview. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, in my opinion, I wasn't too sure what to make of the song. To be honest with you, um, I know it's like a really good collaboration, Raga and Tesha. It's interesting that you say it's working in India. So you know, I've not had a chance to really try it in a club setting here yet but it's interesting that you hear it's crossed over in india um tesha's new record uh jack willinis i think is very strong in terms of the production yeah. sartek thank you so much for being with us here for united colors as he said you can follow him everywhere s-a-r-t-e-k sartek from india let's keep it moving here on united colors ruckus avenue radio <laughs>